Good morning, everybody. See, I'm allowed in our hanging chair. I'm allowed to rock in it. Not the point of this video. <laughs> so, the point of this video is to install this behemoth thing here. This is our inverter. You're Cut. holding it upside down. We've got ideas about running electrical cooking appliances in the van, and we want to see how this inverter does with that, like how our batteries do, so that is today's task. We also happen to own a waffle maker and a blender, okay? And I really, really like to see if I can take them with us in the van, because I want my waffles. So, you know what's coming, right? Do you know how to mount it? I think so. I mean, positive to the battery with a breaker in between, negative to our BMV shunt, and then on the other end, plug whatever you want in. I think the hardest part is going to be figuring out where we want to mount it. Well, I want it to go underneath the couch, like all the other electrical stuff. And I prefer to place it there than over there. Yeah, but you said that the fans cannot face any cables, and that's going to face them right there. The fans that are on the back will kick out hot air whenever the inverter's on and therefore we won't want any cabling behind those uh, those fans. And currently literally every cable that comes into the battery from this side of the van comes down and behind there. Yeah, and they're still not arranged. Look at that mess. No, they're not arranged. Well, let's try and fit the inverter there because that, it looks like a lot of space, but the inverter is humongous. So let's rearrange this space to make it tidy. There we go. So let's see if the inverter will fit in that space. There you go. It fits. Yay. Problem solved. No, oh. no problem solved. If this leg here was not in the way, I could fit it horizontally. This should now um, be long enough to be able to reach the inverter. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. Ignore the colour changes and the wire changes and everything else. Nothing happened. The cable was definitely not too short. They don't even know what cable we're talking about. No, and they never will. Mm -hmm. So this is the cable from our controller for the inverter that's all the way up there. And we've extended it so it will now reach where the inverter is going to be. I've also kind of tidied up this area a bit so I've moved around where all the cables and stuff. Honest, you can't tidy it up. It is tidy uh, than it was which was not very tidy. So this which is our old fuse panel still covered in that like fire retardant paint that we painted the whole box in is going to live here hiding the cables behind it and it's also going to mount our breaker for the inverter. So instead of just using a simple fuse for our inverter, because it's going to be drawing so high amps, we actually decided to get a breaker instead so that we can just reset it in case this ever trips. What a breaker is essentially is a resettable fuse. So if I wanted to trip the circuit, cut all power to the inverter, I click the button. This disconnects and now the two sides, so this is from the inverter and that goes to the batteries, it is disconnected. And this will also trip if the ampage goes over 200 amps and then we can just reset it uh, once we've fixed any problems because this shouldn't go off unless there are problems. Yeah. So the giant worm of a cable, so that's the 35 mil negative, will connect onto that port of our inverter. So it will run all the way through our fuse box to our BMV shunt which is on the other side of this panel. what you came to see. Alrighty, 
So that's the inverter set up. It's connected there to the positive and the negative sneaks its way around to our shunt, which you can just peek through there. So we're just using our AC charger up there to charge the batteries up to full so that we can test it. And in the meantime, it's grapes. May I have mine? There was one thing I wanted to tell you about our inverter. So with inverters, you can actually get two different types. There's pure sine wave inverters and then just regular sine inverters. The modified sine wave is basically kind of like cheap inverters. They just try and convert DC to AC because that's what an inverter is doing. Modified sine uh, doesn't have a smooth curve. Yeah. So it picks select voltages, is it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so select, select, select voltages. So it's kind of like um, a step. <laughs> which means that for a lot of new electronics... Um, or delicate electronics. Yeah, so laptops, sound systems and, and whatnot. Unless your device has a protection on it, mm. uh, the voltage that the inverter provides may damage the, yeah. the device. Meanwhile, uh, pure sine wave inverters don't basically take the shortcut, they don't cheat, they actually turn DC into AC yeah, they... using a smooth curve like actual household AC supply. Yeah. So they modulate what they release to the appliance. So that's what we've gone with. We've gone with a pure sine wave inverter. Can I mm -hmm. now eat the grapes? Yes. Okay. We'll eat our grapes and then we'll um, boot up the inverter. Right, so turning on. DC system on. And let us flip the switch on our AC breaker. So I'm going to switch it to remote control mode. Yeah. Right, so now the remote control up there has the power to turn on and off our... Oh, there you go. Lights. Yeah, excellent. Okay, and we should be drawing just over an amp. So when the inverter is on, like it is at the moment, it draws about an amp just on standby, which is why it's really useful to be able to turn it on and off. Because if you have that on all the time, that's going to be a continuous load on your battery. So yeah, we can turn it on and we can turn it off. There you go, ampage draw back down to nearly nothing. Cool. So okay. the inverter turns on. So, back on. Let's test some appliances. Yeah. So we've run an extension cable from the inverter all the way to the back, which is uh, this thing here. It's just a garden extension cable thing uh, for now. So we have a light, the blender, um, a uh, electric heater, which we're all keeping in the van because we have our heating. But it's a good one to test. Because, ah, but it's a good one to test because it has a thousand watt setting and a two thousand watt setting. So that's the maximum we we should you know put on our inverter. And then in the end, we have a waffle maker because if the waffle maker works and it doesn't drain our batteries too quickly, then uh, we're having waffles. Yeah. So other than the lights and the you know things on standby and the inverter, now we don't have anything else running. Yep. Go ahead. Plug that in. Right, so there's power to that. You can see that. Oh, light on. There we are. <laughs> yep, so it's not drawing that many watts. Yep. How much is it drawing? Disconnect it and I'll tell you. Or just turn it off. Right, so go back down. Yeah, about 10 watts. Excellent. Okay, so right. that's AC power in the van. Sorted. Right, what's next on the agenda? Well, it'll have to be the blender, wouldn't it? I don't have to make a smoothie to make this a valid test, do I? No. Go ahead, plug it in. Okay. Okay. Do not explode. So this should draw 600 watts, give or take. 600 watts, right? All right, we're currently on minus 100, so we're looking for minus 700. Okay, I think that was a low power setting because it was only minus 300 watts. So it was only drawing does it 200 have buttons? watts. It does not. I think it depends what's inside. So this drew 200 watts successfully. Oh, I think you're coming with us. Hello. Blender, test successful. Now then. Excellent. You're coming home. The big one. Christ. Okay. So this is the electric heater, just a standard, I don't know, was it 30 pounds, whatever? Yeah, 20 pounds, sort of whatever from the supermarket. Yep. This kept us warm all of the winter before we had the heating. 
Yeah. So, you know, when we're working in the van and free, <laughs> freezing our fingers off. Which, by the way, if you have insulation in your van, shut the doors, put an electric heater on for 30 minutes, you're golden. Anyway, that's not the point. Mm -hmm. So, we have a 1000 watt and a 2000 watt setting. Yeah, I, I don't know what, what, what the wattage is on just the fan running, so we can see that first. Okay, so turn it on. Right, so we're drawing... Oh, <laughs> that's a lot of dust. Turn it back on. Turn it back on. Get the dust out. There you go, dust is out. It's only drawing like 30 watts. 20 watts. So pretty much nothing on right. the fan. So that's just the fan. Now if we turn the heater on... Oof, the light's dimmed. Right there, minus 1060 watts. So it's drawing in nearly a thousand watts. The light's dimmed, by the way. Yeah, I saw that. That is drawing a thousand watts. We're currently at minus 81 amps. 81 amps. We're drawing 81 amps from the battery. Alright, shall we go to 2000? Go to 2000. This should not blow anything. The mice did more. Yeah. Minus 2036 watts. Minus 163 amps. So what was that again? At the end? Minus 2,063 watts. That's including the lights. 2,063. So that means that if we were to get that uh, three-in-one Panasonic uh, oven, it's a microwave and a fan oven and a grill all in one. And I think each of the settings only takes 1,000 watts anyway. That yes. means that, it, that, 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 that we can potentially run that. Oh yeah, we'd be able to run that if our batteries were full and we were to run it on max power, we'd be able to run it for two and a half hours. Two and a half hours, and that's more than really we will ever run a day. I mean, the longest I can think of running something like that is for mm. Jack a Potato for like 30 minutes or something. But since we'll have the microwave option, we can learn how to cook in the microwave. Because cooking in the microwave, you can do good stuff in the microwave, but it's a whole different <laughs> way of cooking. Like, yeah. You have to relearn how to cook. If we got that 1000 watt oven, mm -hmm. and let's say we cooked for an hour, a day we would drain 83 amp hours out of our batteries 83 amp hours and then how long will it take us to recharge that back up uh let's say only only using the alternator if there's no solar coming in one hour 40 minutes one hour and 40 minutes and that's on a big cooking day yeah yeah and that's with no solar coming in as well mm -hmm. and i was thinking we can always take our camping stove with us with gas definitely because yeah. that's a great backup uh if anything cuts or, or for some reason we're preserving power. The thing that matters more with electric cooking is not whether you can buy the stuff that can handle the electric cooking. We've got the inverter to handle it and we've got lithium which can handle that really high ampage draw for a yeah. continuous amount of time. So both of those are not an issue. The only thing as you said is recharge mm -hmm. time and total capacity because since we only have 200 amp hours we don't kind of have like that much of a buffer zone. Yeah. If we do like two or three heavy cooking days without any driving or any solar. Then we'll be probably quite dry. But if we do see that we're gonna be using it that much and we're gonna be that drained, then we're gonna turn the engine on anyway or plug in <laughs> into AC. We are generally covered. We, we can manage as long as we're not um, in the middle of nowhere, up a mountain <laughs> where uh, we're in the middle of a storm and we can't move because we're trapped. Well, um, uh, and there's yeah. no way to plug into AC, which in that case, I'm pretty sure we're going to be a bit more conservative anyway. <laughs> so... Waffles? I think waffles are in order. So, Melanie's waffle bar is now open. Let's begin. <laughs> Ready. Oh, I'm ready. 
We're running. We're good. Yep. Uh, no like, foul ups. So to cook these two waffles, and it's still cooking those ones, we've drawn... We've used about 10, 12% of our battery, so about 20 amp hours for waffles. Mm -hmm. You do realise you have waffles in front of you and you're doing maths. Mission success. Inverter installed. Waffles obtained. Mm. I'm going to eat my waffle mm. before it gets cold. So what kind of waffle would you like? Mm. See you next time.